Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. So the PlayStation 1 emulator Duck Station has finally got a native ARM macOS release. Not only is this one of the best PlayStation 1 emulators available, it can also make use of Vulkan through Molten VK. It also features Precision Geometry Transform Pipeline, which basically removes the jittery and wobbliness that a lot of PlayStation 1 game engines had at the time. So today I'm going to show you how to download the new official macOS native ARM release, how to set up the BIOS, controllers, graphics, and get it working best on your Apple Silicon Mac. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming tutorials. So what I'm going to do is to leave a link in the description for this GitHub page and once you click the link all you need to do is to go to the releases section here and then we're going to go ahead and download the latest preview build. So this is going to be different if you're watching this in the future. All you need to do is find the latest version and then click on the assets arrow here and that's going to show us all of the different versions of DuckStation that you can download. So the one that we're interested in is this one called DuckStation-Mac-Release.zip. Just click on this and then this is going to go ahead and download. So the next file that we're going to need is the PlayStation 1 BIOS. So I do recommend downloading this file scph5501.bin. I'm not going to link exactly to where to download this from, but there are literally dozens of places. If you just punch this into Google, then you'll find lots of places to download this file if you really need it. Or you can easily dump your own from PlayStation 1 hardware. Anyway, make sure that we have a copy of this file before we can move on to the next step. So we're going to go to Finder and then Downloads. And then we're going to open up this DuckStation Mac release.zip to extract it. And now that's extracted, what we're going to do is to drag and drop this file into our applications folder. So just drag this and then let go. And now within applications, we're going to find DuckStation. So just go ahead and double click on DuckStation. And if it says here, cannot be opened, then just press cancel. Then we're going to hold down the control key and then click on DuckStation, then click the open button here. And now it's asking us, are we sure we want to manually open DuckStation? Press open. And now DuckStation has opened up. So next thing that we need to do is to add at least one game. So I'll click add game directory. And I'm not gonna show you how to download these games as well, but if you just type into Google PS1 ISO and then the name of the game, it's gonna be pretty easy to find your games. Or you can go ahead and dump them from original PlayStation 1 discs. So here I'm just gonna show you my folder of PlayStation games here and press open. Here it's asking us whether we want to scan these subfolders, press yes. And now we have our games added to DuckStation. So next I'm going to do is to set up the BIOS. We're going to click on settings here and then click the BIOS button here. And then what we're going to do is to click the open and explore button. And then this is going to list the default BIOS folder is for DuckStation. What I'm going to do is to put my scph5501.bin file. And then I'm going to drag and drop this into the BIOS folder here. Close these windows. And then if we click refresh list here, then it's going to automatically detect that we have the scph5501.bin. And then basically we can select these for all of the different regions. So the next thing I want to do is to set up a controller. So I already have a Bluetooth controller added to Mac OS. All you need to do is to go to Bluetooth settings, a pair a Bluetooth controller. So I've got my PS5 controller attached here. And then within DuckStation, we'll click on settings and then click on controllers. And you can see here that the STL0 controller has been detected. So with the controller port one, what we're going to do is to click automatic mapping to the STL0 PS5 controller. So all of those controllers have mapped correctly. Press close. And another thing we're going to change is go to settings and then enhancements. And then we're going to change the internal resolution. So I'm going to change this to five times so that we can get 1080p resolution and then press close. And then basically we're ready to play some games. What's cool as well is that you can put this into game cover mode. This looks very similar to EtherSX2 and Dolphin. That's because it's made by the same developer called Stenzek. And so this interface looks very clean. And what you can see is you can add game covers to here. One tip I have here to fill these all out automatically is if you go to tools and then click cover downloader then what we can do is to add a bunch of links. I'm going to leave a link to this Reddit comment here. Basically, what you want to do is to copy all of these links. So just select them all here, control click, press copy. Then we're going to control click and paste into this box here. So this contains all of those links and then press the start button. And it's basically going to automatically find all of the cover art for you so that you can make this look a little bit prettier. So we're all basically set to go. I'm going to go ahead and double click on Tomb Raider. So we're going to go into Lara's home and then play this tutorial level. So basically you see here, the game is running pretty well. We're actually running under OpenGL. So if you want to tweak some of these settings, you can just go to the display settings here and you can actually switch between OpenGL and Vulkan. So if I switch to Vulkan, it's going to be switching to Molten VK. And you can see here, I've got my global metal HUD open at the same time. Basically, we should have very similar performance either way. So if one thing you might notice is that the PlayStation 1 graphics engines tend to be kind of wibbly wobbly. So everything's kind of juddering in and out. So this is very, very common for PlayStation 1. And what's cool about DuckStation is that you can fix this using enhancements. If you go here and then click geometry correction, and then basically it'll go through a compile 
and then you won't have that jitteriness in the game. So this is, makes a pretty huge difference, especially when the game's in motion. Nothing jitters as much, and it's definitely one of the best features about Duck Station. Another thing as well is if you want to force some of the widescreen hacks, just go to the display settings, click on aspect ratio, and you can change this to 16 by 9. And then if I full screen this, then this is going to be in a widescreen aspect ratio. So this is definitely one of the best ways to play PlayStation 1 games on a Mac. Not only can we run the game with Vulkan using Molten VK, but it's also a native ARM application as well. So there's definitely a lot of benefits to running PlayStation 1 games using DuckStation. So anyway, I hope you found this tutorial video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.